Welcome, everyone. Cheers. Howdy. Welcome, everybody. You. Hello. Great to see everyone. The Tims, we have Jeremy, we have Chris, we have special guest Mark Hernandez from Dress the Dead. Ooh. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, awesome. Right. Thanks for asking. Appreciate yeah, of it. course. I'm loving the new single that you guys dropped the other day, Knives Out. I thought we would maybe watch it first and then we could talk about it. Um, awesome. Mark, if you have time after, I would love yeah, to ask absolutely. you a few questions. Awesome. Sure. So let me get this going.
Wow. Woo! That was Go. awesome. <laughs> that was hella sick. Incredible. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I like the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, it's funny. Uh, a friend of mine, um, when we first started doing this uh, band, when Craig first, uh, him and I first talked about uh, playing music again together, uh, when we decided to get together, we used a friend of mine's studio in San Jose. And I hadn't played the drums in probably been a couple of years, you know, in that capacity. You know, I, I played covers and whatnot, but not in the capacity that you hear there. And uh, he took videos that first night and he sent it to Craig and I the other day when we released this song. And it was like almost, it's hilarious and almost pathetic where I was at. Uh, at that first rehearsal, you know, to where uh, we've come now. Uh, the, the building that we've done is just amazing. Yeah, Mark, it's incredible. I mean, you are incredible. You have a very long kind of history in B the Bay Area. Yeah. It's rash, playing with like the violence guys and forbidden. So can yeah. you tell, share with uh, our, your history with everyone? Yeah, I basically, um, I mean, I really cut my teeth I was 19. I had just uh, graduated high school, and um, I got a call from Sean Killian to come and uh, audition for Violence. Uh, Perry was uh, on to other things, and uh, you know, I uh, went down. I met the guys and uh, got a tape from them, and came in and auditioned and uh, got the gig. Well, it's a funny story because uh, true to form, you know, it's like it depends on how you're looking at it. Uh, your glass is half empty or half full, you know, I always tell people they never asked me to join the band, you know, but, uh, you know, what Sean did is after, uh, after a couple of rehearsals, he just sat down. He's like, so you want to do the gig with us or what? You know, and here I am, I'm, uh, you know, just out of high school. Fuck yeah, man, I'm in, <laughs> you know? And, uh, so it's kind of funny. Cause, uh, when I talked to Zet, uh, I did Zet show a while ago. And he was like, well, that was it, man. He asked, you, you want the gig? You want to do this? And I'd never thought of it that way. But uh, that's really where I cut my teeth. And uh, playing with those guys, they were my heroes. Um, and, uh, you know, and once that, uh, once Sean decided that he was going to uh, leave the band, uh, the basis of what was violence at that time, because Rob Flynn had already left and uh, been doing Machine Head, we... Uh, stayed on and did a uh, torque and uh ended up releasing a self-titled record in 96 uh went over to europe and um uh, right about the time we were kind of starting to get our own legs and coming into our own as a band you know not not the remnants of violence because the first three songs we started with were actually going to be for the next violence record uh, and that was breed shooter and again and um but the time by the time we hit our stride and we were finding where we were as a group you know uh casually strikes again phil was like you know i'm done i'm out and uh so at that point it was like i just kind of hopped around from gig to gig to gig i did uh some time with vision rumors um but nothing really stuck i would say until uh oh man when was it? It was probably uh, when I started jamming with a couple of Skin Lab guys in a band. Um, Mike Roberts, when he left Skin Lab, I got together with uh, him and uh, a guy from a, a band out in Sacramento, Lucky 13, Ron. And uh, we had uh, Dave Moore, who was in a, a Fresno thrash band called Mindbender. And uh, just an amazing vocalist, man. And uh, we got together and started this this thing it was heavy it was groovy it was you know it was great and then uh phil decided to come back and start playing music again and he hooked up with this guy from silicon valley from a company called exodus and uh this guy wanted to uh actually he was making music and uh, phil's cousin uh introduced the two because he was a violence fan so they started working on music together and that was the beginning of a band uh we did called technocracy which was kind oh, of, yeah, yeah, I remember a, uh, 
I don't know what you would. I mean, it was a metal band, but we had samples, we had a light show, we had all this this stuff mm-hmm. going on. But at the basis mm-hmm. of it, it was a metal band, you know. And uh, we did that, and uh, we released a record, and uh, well, <laughs> here we go again, man. You know, Phil gets uh, asked uh, to go out on the road with Machine Head. You know, and it's like I remember. Uh, looking at those other guys and they were like, Oh man, this is great, man. You know, Phil's going to go out there. He's going to pump the band, which he did, you know, but I looked at those guys and I was like, he ain't coming back, man. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) you guys are crazy, man. He's going to go on the road with machine head and then he's going to come back and play clubs with us. You guys are, you guys are high. And that's what happened. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, after that, um, I kind of just, floated around i uh ended up getting the uh heathen gig you know and uh, i was working on their their record uh um oh man it was the one evolution of chaos yes i started working on tunes with him for that record and i went i went to europe with him and played some shows and uh you know um i started working on the defiance record the prophecy um and then uh you know uh we played a new year's eve show this other band i had uh circling back a little bit uh reignition uh kind of a rock band that had uh steve Escavell and snake from skin lab and tim howe from uh sacrilege bc and uh dave moore and it was just uh it was like i called it heavy metal like diet heavy metal because it was kind of it was heavy because we were tuned down but it was we were really just playing rock. And uh, we played a New Year's Eve gig with um, Glenn Avalis' band, LD50, and um, uh, Dublin Death Patrol. And uh, Forbidden uh, was getting ready to go and uh, do that big reunion tour. And um, let's see, Paul had gotten the call to join Testament, and Gene was unable to do the tour. So I remember standing there with Glenn, and, uh, you know, we're kind of bullshitting. And uh, Escavel goes, oh, Mark, he's your guy. And he was like, really? Can you play that stuff? I was like, yeah, sure, man. Now, mind you, up until I joined the band, truth be told, I only owned Twisted in a form. I had no idea anything <laughs> else about that band. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to say I was a fan would be a stretch. I appreciated what they did. but you know, uh, had no idea. And so Glenn presented to the band and, uh, Craig was very skeptical, you know? And so, uh, they decided to give me an audition and I worked my ass off. You know what I mean? I really did. I did a lot of woodshedding to go in there and make sure that, you know, uh, when I, when I decide I want to do something, I'm, I'll do it a hundred percent. You know what I mean? And, uh, so I went in there and, uh, set up at the sound wave we played through the songs they asked me to play through and you know craig's kind of like mm, yeah yeah you know all right so we take a break we come back in and uh i think it was after uh we did uh infinite again and then in through the door bus zetro and he's like nailed it he's your guy you know <laughs> and uh <laughs> and so uh you know there was still a, a testing period with that you know, with Craig and, uh, and that, but, uh, I'll tell you what, man, uh, we end up having some musical chemistry that I have not had with like anybody else. You know, there's a certain thing that musicians know that when you, there's a language that is spoken and, uh, him and I speak this language that I, I really don't speak with anybody else. It's almost as if, you know, like, you know what's going to happen, where you're going, what you're thinking. And it's really, really amazing. So, you know, it's really cool to be back playing with him in a, in a different capacity. You know, um, I can say for myself, I'm a lot more mature than I was then. You know, I've got uh, I've got things a little bit more together. And, uh, you know, it's been a really great healing process, uh, not only musically, but uh for us as people, you know, um, it's just, uh, 
where we're at now and where I'm at now with all these guys in the band is that, you know, the music and all that is secondary. I want to make sure that at the end of the day, we're still close as friends because that's what it's about for me. It's about the the connections. And um, so, you know, that, that being said, up to current date, you know, I get to play music with, uh, you know, on a regular basis with three of my best buds, you know, and um, when Kayla's in town, she's, she's very much a woman, but she's one of the boys, you know, with us, you know, <laughs> she's, she's family. And uh, that's, that's the way we think about it. Wonderful. No, was that the, long winded the, enough? <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. I mean, basically you Mark, played Mark, in you, like every. Mark, you jumped, huh? Pat, you did, you, you jumped over Demonica too. You didn't talk on Demonica. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That was on my list. Oh, Thanks, um, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, I cover uh, that. <laughs> yeah. What are the, I mean, God, to tell you, like, I would be an asshole if I didn't feel like, uh, a little bit of gratitude or feel blessed in some way. I know everybody says, oh, blessed, hashtag blessed, but I really do feel that way because <laughs> um, I've been able to do so many things that, you know, like 90% of my peers will never do, you know? Um, so the first night of the Forbidden Reunion Tour, uh, we played a, a small club in Denmark and Hank Sherman from Merciful Fate came out with Klaus who was his best friend, you know, and they had this band and they wanted Craig to be in this band. And it was a, a thrash band. It was Hank Sherman doing thrash metal. And he does it. <laughs> he does it very well. Um, and so they originally, they were asking Craig, they wanted both staff. And I think commitment wise, and just as far as where he was at, he, he wasn't able to do it. So I was, I can't tell you how hard I was lobbying, man. I was doing everything but giving hand jobs to get that gig, you know? Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, because, I mean, he's a hero. He's an, he's a freaking right. icon, you know, without Merciful yeah, Fate. absolutely. There's no Metallica. It's like, it goes like that. And so mm -hmm. I was like, Craig, dude, you, you got to tell him, get me the gig, man. You got to, and he's like, yeah, you know, okay, we'll see. So, you know, he threw my name out there. And again, another skeptic, you know, Hank's like, well, you know, I don't know. And uh, <laughs> so they ended up, they ended up giving me a shot. And uh, as far as my catalog goes, that's the most brutal record that I've made. Um, I mean, not, I'm not saying it's the best record, but as far as content, that, that thing like picks you up and beats you up until the last note of the record drops you back down, you know, and uh you know, to be able to play shows and make a record with like a hero like that, you know, it's just, it's insane. It's insane. You know, very, very lucky human being, man. Very lucky. That's cool. What year was that? That was, uh, I did the record uh, because Omega Wave and uh, Demonstrous came out in 2010. So okay. what I was doing is we were doing demos for uh, what would be Omega Wave. So we were working on getting a record deal. Nuclear Blast was interested, but they wanted to hear what we had. And um, so after we did the European uh, reunion, we got offered uh, two shows in Japan with Voivod and Testament. And wow. so, you know, again, uh, I know Craig, if he listens to this, he'll love it. Because I always said, I'm the higher gun, you know, I'm, I'm just a higher gun. Um, so they asked me to do the shows. Went over there, did the shows, uh, and at that time, you know, when we came back, Craig actually felt comfortable maybe exploring writing music with Forbidden because he had very much, this was just going to be a reunion. You know, I don't want to say a cash grab because it's it's never like that for him. Um, it, it, it doesn't work that way. He's all about, it's it's artistically where he's at. You know what I mean? If it doesn't stir something in him, there's no point in doing it. Um, so we did those shows and then, you know, him and I had got on very, very well, you know, we were like a gruesome twosome kind of deal. And so he, you know, warmed up to the idea of writing some music. So the first song we wrote was Adapt or Die. And so in the middle of working on that, you know, then the, the demonica thing came up. So while we were demoing uh, Hope Gnosis and uh, Adapt or Die, I was also in the studio 
tracking the drums for what would be demonstrous with demonica um so you know that was a that was a big year for me um musically you know to come out with two really great records at that time um you know it was fantastic okay but yeah thanks for thanks for covering that because i know that was on the list i was looking in the <laughs> uh that encyclopedia of metal and looking and it was pr pretty much you played for like almost every big area thrash band that exists outside of metallica i guess that's but what i say otherwise I'm... you covered like you covered it all Honestly, yeah, I missed, really I missed Death Angel and uh, um, <laughs> Exodus. Yeah, I missed Death and Exodus. Yeah. Yeah. I missed those two. But that's all right. Those guys awesome. got monster players, you know. Yes. Yes. Um, so let's talk about the album. I know uh, I heard Craig do a face Facebook live streaming event and Kayla as well the other day talking about uh, there's you plan on releasing eight songs in the course of the next eight months with the first one being Knives Out, which just got released. And then I believe the plan is to release a new track every month until you get to the eighth and then you're gonna release the album. Is, is that what the plan is or? Correct, yeah, okay. correct. So uh, along the way though, we'll be, uh, this is actually the, uh, if you could find the perfect deal, this is actually it. You know what I mean? We own everything. And then again, we're responsible for everything too. So it's going to be as successful as we make it, you know? Uh, so we have our work cut out for us, but uh, we all feel extremely confident in what we're doing. So the the goal is, is over the next eight months, at, until we were going to, we're supposed to go to Europe, we have festivals. We have a, a small tour that will be booked. We'll, we'll say, I'll say will, because we'll see where we are with all this pandemic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, uh, those, those eight songs would be dropped up until the point that we were heading over to Europe, at which point we would do a full length, you know, an eight song release and have product out so that we're not just coming over to Europe because, you know, because of the uh, pedigree of members in the band, we have connections, you know? So uh, I don't wanna say we have a fast track to things, but in some ways uh, there are favors and ways that we can get into circles and get on uh, to doing things that maybe some new band can't, you know? You built up a Absolutely. bit of a rapport with the, within the industry. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. Okay. Awesome. And so by the time we got over there, the plan is to have that released you know, and uh, mm -hmm. be able to be pushing product, at, you know, for people. So when you go over there, you know, because we have the Dynamo Metal Fest, they they offered us the show. Uh, you know, it's like, great, but how do you get people to show up if they've never heard of you before, you know? Right. So, yeah, the plan um, to, uh, as we go along, because our, our catalog right now, in, in the eight songs that you, that you guys are all going to get, they're all drastically different, you know? I mean, I would like to say, I'll use Craig's word, we're we're basically fearless. There's nothing that we won't say, oh no, we're this band, we can't do it. You know, and when, when Kayla uh, joined the family, it really became, there's nothing we can, we can say no to, you know, because her, vocally she can do anything, you know, so. She's fabulous, yeah. So yeah. are the eight songs, are they all done or is it a work in progress? We have six already. Uh, a couple still need some vocals, um, but you know, uh, for the most part, the next ones coming out in succession are done. Okay. And uh, yeah. Awesome. We'll look forward to it. I, I am too. I, you know, <laughs> Dives Out, honestly, is uh, like I said, you know, uh, that was one of the songs that Craig uh, and I jammed the first night we got together and even thinking about playing music again together. So, you know, you're talking 2016 to now, you know, for me, oh. that's old. You know what I mean? Like, the, oh God, <laughs> we wrote that, uh, you know, or it's it's old. We've we've done that for a long time now. Like we're mm -hmm. writing so much new stuff right now that we're all really geeking out about, you know, but there's like this whole process we got to go through. We got to get you all that stuff that we've done before so we can, you know, move forward to get the new stuff out. Right. Yeah, no, super looking forward to that. 
So, um, oh, also, I wanted to mention you did a great job on that Cornell um, tribute, that fundraiser. Oh, thank so you. I really enjoyed that. Do you want to tell the folks what song you played? And yeah, I uh, I was actually really. It was very humbling when uh, Thomas called me and said, "Hey, you know, we'd like to get you on this benefit because, I mean, to me, I think that's." it's really an awesome thing that they do, you know, I mean, the suicide prevention and uh, the money that they do, but the positive cause. And so when Thomas asked, he's like, well, what songs do you want to do? And I'm like, oh man, I mean, I have no idea. I said, why don't you just pick two and tell me what they are? And uh, he said, well, how about uh, Slaves and Bulldozers? And I was like, yeah, okay, that's great. And uh, so then after that, I chose Hunger Strike. Because I, I really like that song, too. And uh, honestly, we were in the middle of trying to demo uh, some other stuff. And I was working on um, one of those collab jams with, with Phil. So I, all in the middle of this, it's like when things happen for me, they all happen at once. You know what I mean? There's like a dry spell where I could do a bunch of stuff and nothing's happening. And then right. all in the course of a weekend, I've got to knock out like six things, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. So, I'm yeah, it's fantastic. I'm looking. I'm not sure if they're posted. I'll have to ask Tony, um, and to see if they're out there. But I was looking because I rewatched that show many times, and then you know, of course, it, they took it off now uh, of the channel. But uh, yeah, I'll I'll throw it up there if I can find it. You're fantastic. That'd be awesome. I know you have thank a hard you. stop in two in one minute. So thank no, you no, so no. much. We're, we're good. Yeah, if you, if you need that, keep going. Yeah. All okay. right. Okay, great. Does anyone have any questions for Mark? Not really a question, just an appreciation, man. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm a huge fan. You know, it's like if I had more balls in my youth, I probably would be playing. But instead, I went like a sensible, you know, nine to five job type shit. But, you know, it, it, it's my my daughter, she sings and I'm, I try to stoke that. And because I don't want I don't want her to have that same drive that you have and that I had to disappear, you know? So, right. so just thank you for doing what you do. And it fucking rocks, man. Uh, I, awesome. dr dress, dress a dead. It fucking kills it. <laughs> I, I'm super excited to hear what else you guys have and your past catalog from what I am aware of, or from what I am familiar with is just fucking tits, man. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase in a long time. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. you, you know it's funny if you if you go back and look at some of the live footage people are familiar with with the songs but i've you know i i try to often go over to the rehearsal space to hang out with the guys when they're rehearsing and it's not really i mean it is rehearsing but in other ways it's it's more creating there was one time i was over there a couple of months ago and it all began with one riff. And in a matter of three hours, these these guys had put together a song that just ripped. And if you're familiar with, you know, the the music that that we've got out that we played live and that's going to be coming out, like Mark said, the eight songs, the stuff that's going to come out after that is going to just really surprise people and blow their minds because it goes in so many different directions. The writing style and the mm -hmm. the uh, the performance is just you know, it, everything is a little bit different. So that's one of the really cool things about the band is it's impossible to pigeonhole Dress the Dead into one type of music because you can't. Yeah, I'm really that. curious to, yeah, I'm really curious to hear the next one. Um, I know I saw, Kayla was in the band, right? When the Killian on command, she was, yeah, that was, she was that, that was band. her first show. Talk about trial by fire, huh? <laughs> right it was packed and it was yeah i know i remember i remember seeing but i mean hearing this latest release and just i mean that was what was that four years ago that was, was that three, uh, four years ago three 18. four years ago yeah 2017 or 18 18 18 okay. yeah okay yeah i remember because yeah. i saw with uh, i saw dress the dead with peter i think once and then that's all um, he played <laughs> okay i was there i was there dude <laughs> dna loves. And, you know, it, oh, no, slims yeah we did death angel man and, and that's one of the cool things um you know I, I i feel we're really unique in the bay area because there's so much um i just want to say camaraderie brotherly love you know um 
we're not in the eighties anymore where it's a uh, competition, you know, it's, it, it's all about trying to help everybody, you know, and Ted and those guys given us, our, I mean, basically our first shows were sold out two nights in a row, death angel Christmas. It's like, bam, you know what I mean? That's, that's really doing uh, a brother solid right there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think I talked to, uh, to Sean about this whole competitive thing and I got, you know, and all the guys remember it was just like, you know, arms folded and not really, I mean, uh, not talking crap, but not being completely supportive, but now, especially everyone's older, wiser, hopefully, but, you know, instead of tearing other people down, I see so much support now, like, you know, bands, promoting bands, not their own music, but some other, like, oh, this is my brother, Mark, you know, check him out, you know, it's just so great to see, but sometimes it, it takes, sometimes it comes with age, because, you know, everyone was young, that was a long time ago, like 30, like 30 years ago, 25, yeah. 30 years ago, people were cocky, and Sean, you know, he had some regrets, it's like, yeah, you know, shouldn't have done that and that, but, you know, live and learn, so thankfully we have yeah. another opportunity now to kind of it's like do better do better so and, and you know it's i think it's just uh we're just part of history right we, it it all comes full circle you know and mm -hmm. it's coming back to you know where uh i i don't want to say we're in vogue but i mean heavy music <laughs> is it is it's happening you know and god bless those kid bands you know that uh doug what what everybody did back in the eighties and, you know, we're influenced by that to keep it going, you know? Absolutely. So Mark, you were talking about some collab jams and stuff. So besides dress the dead, who, what else are you working on right now? Well, well, I, uh, you know, when we first got locked down, uh, with this, uh, pandemic, um, I had reached out because, uh, violence had, when they did their, uh, first two shows, uh, they uh, asked me to come and uh, jam a few songs with them on the uh, Sunday afternoon show, the matinee. And, uh, man, it was, I, I got to tell you, going into rehearsals with them, for some reason, it was like, it was very nerve wracking, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was like, um, I don't know, having Sean sing those songs that ended up being Torp songs, but having him sing them, there's just this energy to it. There's something... That's what I love about Sean. He has, we were talking the other day and it's like one of those things that makes him unique. It's like, he, he always has something to say. His lyrics aren't just, you know, about nothing. He he very yeah. much has a point of view and he's he's always felt that if, if you're given that uh, podium or that platform, you should use it and say what you need to say. So um, after that, you know, I was, I've, I've always been dying to jam with those guys again. And um, so uh, after we did the killing on command, you know, and, and Sean got better, thank God, uh, you know, he was like, he was like, you know, Mark, I want to do something with you. And he's like, I'm thinking that will, and, and this may or may not happen. I don't know, but uh, this was before violence decided to get back together. He wanted to just do a bunch of punk rock uh, and hardcore covers and put together a little band. So, you know, I had assembled a few musicians to do this. And then, of course, violence got back together. So we we backed that one out. <laughs> so when I saw Phil was doing these collab jams with all these dudes, I was like, hey, dude, I would love to do one with you and Sean. And um, the only thing is that, you know, it has to be the right song for Sean because he's not your uh, typical singer. You know, the guy that you can just kind of plug in and say, OK, do your thing. And so, you know, my ideas of grandiosity where, you know, hey, we should do painkiller. We should do, you know, just stupid shit in hindsight. And uh, so uh, we did, we left it up to Sean and Sean picked uh, Pat Travers snorting whiskey. And uh, so we ended up getting a nod from the man himself, you know, Pat Travers, you know, like That's gave cool. us a nod. And, yeah, it was really cool, man. I was That's I was cool. geeking out on that. Um <laughs> So we did that with our, our buddy Dave Rude from uh, Tesla and uh, uh, Dan McNay from uh, Jack Russell's Great White. And it was grooving. It was very cool. So, you know, I did that. And um, I've been uh, talking lately with uh, Esquivel, Steve Esquivel. He's working on a solo record and also uh, our Reignition record that we put out in 2006. If you haven't heard it, 
because you can't find it, first of all. But um, <laughs> it was always one of those things where I, if you ask people who knew what we were doing at the time, it was that band that should have done a lot more than it did. You know what I mean? It basically just, mm -hmm. it face planted. You know, there was no label support or anything like that. So we've been talking to try to uh, secure the rights to it and try to get it out to people. And, you know, if there's interest, just jam. Nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, but or or that's going to detract from what I've been doing with Dress the Dead because as far as what we're doing, that's what we're doing. So, but I'm always open, awesome. you know, I mean, always open if someone says, hey, will you play on this? Will you play on that? Absolutely. Because as far as the way I see it, Anything Craig does, James does, Mikey, Kayla, you know, myself, anything we do outside of the band only brings attention to the band. Yeah, you know, no, you can't, you can't go wrong. Unless it really sucks, then probably you don't want that kind of attention, but I'm fairly confident. <laughs> well, we don't want you to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ashley, Mark, Mark, would it be okay if I played your collab jam since you talked about it? I'm going to share it with the guys. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Okay, let's do that. Love this. <laughs> Killian really impressed me on this when I, you know, because if you've heard violence and then you think Pat Travers, you know, right. He, uh, for me, he was the MVP on this. Yeah, this was, this okay. was chunky and cool. Yeah. I think I only heard it once or twice. So looking forward to it here.
first, that's one of the most awesome rock songs ever. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Pretty great. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, Pretty I have a great. question, man. It's like somebody who makes hamburgers. Yeah, where do you go to get a hamburger? So, I mean, like you listen to, you know, you you do the, all the thrash metal and all that stuff. And then you pull something out like that, which is, you know, I equate that to the song that comes on in the jukebox. You've had a 12 pack, you're in a smoky bar and you're ready to get down. Um, you know, totally divergent. So, you know, when you're not doing what you're doing, what do you listen to? What's the new stuff you like? Uh, you know, everything from, uh, I, you know, it, it's funny because um, I like older 70s and 80s rock. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I will tend to listen to a lot more, uh, hate to admit this, but, you know, like 80s soft rock, you know, like <laughs> I'm spending minute work. I'm spending... Uh, Tears for Fears. I'm spinning things like that. And uh, Duran Duran. And the reason that stuff speaks to me is because of the musicianship. You know, that's actually creating songs. And it was shit that when I was a, a kid, if it wasn't metal, it was garbage. I didn't want anything to do with it. So, you know, I mean, fast forward 25 years and you grow up and you're like, wow. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> you know? Um, so, Anything like that, uh, I've been on a huge Toto kick lately. You know what I mean? Oh like, God. yeah, you know what I mean? Like musicians, people that write songs that um, it, it's, to me today, things are too homogenized, you know? Um, and and kind of like to apply to what we're doing now, we didn't use a click track on anything. We played it live. We played it raw in the studio. And that's how records, in my opinion, should be made. You know, they shouldn't be put in a computer, put to a grid and then made perfect because that's not music. Human beings aren't perfect, you know, and music shouldn't be perfect. It should be a reflection of that. And that's what uh, that's why that older music speaks to me, because it's not perfect. You know, there's ebb and flow. That song in particular, that was a Tommy, uh, Tommy Aldridge and Tommy Aldridge has got great meter. But when I tracked it, I tracked to the song. And trying to grid that to a, to a tempo, it doesn't exist. Like the tempo sh goes back and forth, back and forth. So I just played along to the song and felt it, you know. And that's, uh, to me, that's music, you know. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, that's close enough, man. So what about the new stuff? Any new bands that are interesting or? Uh, I really uh, have been geeking out on the last Trivium record. Uh, yeah, I like them. Alex. Alex Bent's drumming is like amazing. You know what I mean? And for being like a local guy, right? Uh, just amazing. And I think that that's for me, probably their best record, you know, and a majority of it was written by the bass player. So go figure, you know, <laughs> um, but uh, I like that one. I'm trying to think what other uh, kind of new stuff. The last poppy record was killer. And I mean, that's like, you know, an amalgamation of just crazy. Yes. Yes, I finally heard it. It is cool. It is all over the place, but it, it works. It totally so. is. And and that's one of those things, I, f I think, for me, just like going back to the older music, when when records were made, it took you on a journey, right? You started at point A, and all the way till you get to the end, there's a reason that those songs are put in that order to kind of take you on this journey, you know? I mean, you can buy a Pink Floyd record and just pick out, I want this on this on this song, but you're missing the whole point you know what i mean yeah. and uh you know that's that's kind of where i'm at you know i mean but uh i just tend to put things on random i'll go and listen to uh, the new acdc is ruling you know what i mean as far as like the effort they put out in the last 10 years that this one just rips um you know i'm a big foo fighters fan too but uh i don't tend to listen to heavy music as much as i do uh straight up rock music and i always consider myself not uh, like a metal drummer but i consider myself a rock drummer playing metal if that okay. that makes sense yeah that's awesome mark speaking of kind of like the journey have you have you listened to the new heathen album because it's very much like that it's really meant to be awesome listen from top to bottom like in the order because it tells a story right it's, yeah it kind of reminds me of the old days when you're like, oh, my God, I just felt like I was transported listening to that. And I, I don't skip anything. Every, if anything, I repeat. It's like, oh, I got to hear that again before I go to the next one. So 
Yeah, and when uh, when I first heard that, I uh, I called Craig and, and James because James, uh, I I love James, man. He's a great drummer, great drummer. And you know, I told him I was like, dude, you're doing the Bay Area proud. You know, for an East Coast <laughs> boy, you're bringing it. You know, uh, and Craig and too. And uh, I think David sounds like that might be one of the best records uh, he sung on. You yes, know? I, I mean, I agree all the way around, man. That. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a great record. It really is. Awesome. Yeah, that was actually, Chris, thanks for asking because uh, that was going to be my question because this actually, in addition to um, our special guests, is going to feature some new music from some bands. Um, and then I'm like, I can't even see. Oh, and Michael Schenker, he's coming out with a new one. Nice. Yeah. So And Necrot. Do you guys know them? They're from the I Oakland. Heard. Friggin' awesome. Mm-hmm. And then, um, well, Spawnless Ones. Max is supposed to hop on, but he was driving back home from Reno, so hopefully he'll make it in time. But I told him, you know, we'll catch him next time. So they put out a Christmas song, but I think it almost got lost because they released it right around the Death Angel show. Like, all of it was happening, like, that what, uh, that Saturday right before Christmas. So I wanted to call attention to it. So, um, awesome. yeah, there's a lot of great stuff coming out. So, yeah, if you can stick around, I'm going to spin some of these new things and we could discuss it. And uh, but, yeah, great having you on. Okay, let me get this ready. So here's the first one. Sail the darkness. There is no return.
Not bad. He's tuned it down a bit, though. Mm hmm. Actually, I have the second one. Let's uh, let's listen to that second one and then let's discuss what you your initial thoughts after the second one. <laughs> so let me get that going. I don't know whether to call it a ballad or not. It's almost yeah, a ballad. It is. It is. I would say I it's a ballad. I'm, yeah, it's a ballad. It's a it's heavier, it's, but it's a heavier ballad, right? It, it, it's like the heavier parts of November, November Rain. Are you saying it's a power ballad? 
<laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, yeah, is that, yes. Is that, that's not coming yes, back. Yes. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't think, did it ever go away? <laughs> oh, oh, that's true. I'm not an no, Axel fan, but I do love yes. Slash. Yeah, so when I think of ballads, I think of like Motley Crue, you know, uh, home sweet home, home sweet home yeah yeah right. exactly that, no that's yeah no i didn't think of it no I or with was... winds of change right wasn't that a ballad too yep it was yeah that's know? a more that's more cut and dry ballad well yeah, yeah i like yeah. michael Shank yeah michael shanker he sounds great and i like you know he's very he doesn't overplay you know it's like just because he can you know he doesn't just in any situation just kind of do all this stuff that he doesn't need to do so i like it because it's very kind of tasty tasteful like he doesn't I, just you know how other people it's like regardless of what the song is it's like but bam it's like the same kind of stuff so yeah. he, i i always find him not to do that so i appreciate him he's one he was one of my favorites back in the day and it's like it's great to see him still doing it and like probably you know stronger than ever because he had some issues back then and you know i was mad at him for years because it was like i think it was one of those jimmy uh episodes where he's talking about at the edge and like him not showing up and all this stuff and it got canceled. Oh yeah. You know, back back then there was an internet, right? I didn't even know that there was a rescheduled thing because I just left and I was mad at Michael Shanker for years. <laughs> and then he's like, it was rescheduled and you could have come back. I'm like, oh I didn't know that. <laughs> well you, you didn't get the flyer it, outside of Tower Records. Yeah. I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's fine. It's like I'm back to loving him. So so it's good to see him back. So I I, pre I, pref I preferred the sale the what, what was it the sale the, the first one yeah I first preferred one? the fir first one but the second one was was good it, you know it's just I had a preference right. for the first but man either way like dude that cat still he still got it man oh you know, my god and, and he's and he knows he knows where his track is you know he's not trying to he's not trying to reinvent his wheel but but he he he's a polished stone he's a he's a polished wheel he, he's just continuing to go and and he's excelling at it and that was that was pretty damn fucking good i gotta give him credit yeah no yeah no i i love him and it's great to i, I actually had a tweet i had a tweet to him and i was i said in german i was like you know fucking beautiful song you know for the for this sales <laughs> song i was like man yeah no it's great yeah no i i yeah he was one of my favorite guitar players still. So uh, yeah, it's good, good to see him doing some new stuff. So the other one, um, I have a couple of them. I'm not sure if Max is gonna make it, but I said, don't worry about it. Like if, if you can't make it, cause he was driving back from Reno um, to Grass Valley. So we'll, we could play his song anyway. So I wanted to feature Necrot, Necrot. Um, I saw them, I think in the UC theater in Berkeley last year or two years ago. Not last year, two years ago, obviously. Not last year, I didn't see anything. So um, really great band. This is their second album. It's a local label called Tank Crimes. And um, I'll just start kind of playing it because they kind of put the whole album online, but you could kind of get a feel and I'll, I'll just kind of pause it and then let me know what you think. I think they're really good. Um, and I think you'll enjoy it, so.
So well, that was sick. Yeah. So Wasn't that guys, awesome? What do you yeah, think? It, it, great. These guys played the Morbid Angel show. They uh, they were the third band, so they opened. Oh, for, you saw them. Yep, they opened for Possessed, and then Possessed opened for uh, Death An- or Morbid Angel. How were they live, though? In your opinion? Oh, they, they freaking kicked ass. The uh, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, they're the, amazing. Yeah, the bass player uh, Luca Indirio, you know, mm-hmm. you know, super, super, uh, super cool dude. Really good show. Beginning to end, it was really good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish up our agenda because actually we almost got through it. So. Do you remember when Max was here from yes. Homeless Ones? Yeah, yes. super cool that guy. Was, that was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, he's great. He's great. He he's like, I'll join, but I'm coming from Reno to Grass Valley. I'm like, it must be snowing. He's like, but it's not snowing. I'm like, do what you can do, but not urgent. But anyway, you know they haven't had any new, new music for like 20, 30 years. But they got got the band back together, and they have Chris Conto, who used to be in, like a Machine Head killer drummer, and he's a Great fit for that band. He was like a, I think he's like a BMX kind of guy and stuff. Great drummer. Anyway, so they came out with a Christmas single, but unfortunately, I wish it would happened earlier, like around Thanksgiving, so we could have premiered it because they did it like on the twenty first. It was so close, and everyone was already like, you know, for the holidays. So um, I don't think you guys heard it, so I'm just gonna play it really quick and then. Um, Hopefully we'll have him on in the future, but let me get it ready. It's pretty funny. It's pretty fun. Away. 
Santa stole my skateboard. The graphic and ran right out the door. Santa stole my skateboard. Now we can't go skating anymore. Santa stole my skateboard. Santa stole my skateboard. Santa stole my skateboard. That was awesome. I liked that. Wasn't that great?